Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Depends on what time you're watching this video. It's me again, it's Van Dier Kolge, and I'm going to do another tutorial on FVA using the Siemens Annex software. So, hope all of you are okay, healthy, and stay at home, are ready to do this tutorial. I highly recommend to um, pause and come back to the tutorial number two if you haven't done that because um, the tutorial number two would help you to have a better understanding of what we're going to do in this one. But basically, FE is just to use the same sort of principle. So what we're doing today, we're going to use the same principles on the same thing we've done in tutorial number two. But this time we have a shallow beam, which we're going to study. So we're going to make the beam and perform the FE analysis on it um, using the Siemens Annex software and then we do a post-processing and the results. So what this tutorial is saying? Uh, it says we have a shallow beam with a lens of 1.5 meter which on the both sides we have a support and uh, in the middle the 2000 uh, Newton force has been inserted so which technically this one shows that actually we're gonna have a three point base test and we're gonna make the real world condition for it in, in the Siemens Annex software and um, we are um, technically we're gonna find out what's gonna happen with the beam whether it's the uh, deformation in the middle or the buckling in the middle we'll be able to find out what's going on once we put the 2000 uh, Newtons on that beam so let's uh, begin we need to connect to the Siemens Annex on the apps anywhere or desktop anywhere if you're uh, using the remote. So I'm gonna make a new file. File new. And it's a new model. So you can rename it with whatever you want to have. We'll call it a beam. It's a tutor number three. We'll call it T3. Make sure you save it on local drive because if you're using the remote drive or cloud base. Um, you're impacting the um, speed of the simulation. We'll click OK. Great. So now we are ready to make a new sketch. We'll go and click on a sketch. I'm happy to have a sketch in the XY plane. I will click OK. So what do you see in the tutorial? Because we want to make everything symmetry. Symmetrical, I will tell you the reason the next uh, couple of minutes will tell you we need to make a line and convert it to the reference so make a line with a lens of 50 and then click on escape and then right click on it and you will be able to see an option which is called convert to reference on top using the shortcuts or in here convert to reference and try to sketch them but there is an easier way of doing it. That's why I'm going to use Ctrl Z to come back to uh, the beginning. So if you go to the rectangle, we do have an option. So we have the three different options. We have that option using the center to make that. If you use that option, automatically make the rectangle for us symmetrically. So I'm going to use that feature and put the length width of 100 the height of 100 and angle 0 and OK so you will be able to see it actually I've made the rectangle which is symmetrical um, in the Y axis and also X axis so now because we want to make it another rectangle rather than I um, sketch another rectangle I will be able to use uh, a feature called offset curve so we'll click on a sketch curve and I will go here which is the offset curve I will choose the lines that I'll have. I'll use Control A, which choose all of the lines, and I'll put it offset with a distance of 10. And I will click OK. So now also we have uh, another curve that actually is created, another um, square. And I will click on Finish a Sketch. Great. So now I need to extrude it for 1500 millimeters. So we'll click on Extrude, and I will choose the model but basically we want uh, what I'm trying to do I'm trying to make it as completely symmetrical I want the XY plane to be in the middle which because I want to split the bodies in the middle which I will 
tell you later why I looking to do that. So I'm going to divide it in two and I'm say 750 mils extrude, but I will change it as a normal value to the symmetric value. So I will have 750 on both sides and I will click OK. So now, now I, what I've done, I've extruded the curve that I have 750 mil in one side, 750 on the other side is completely symmetrical. Everything is symmetrical. You see that actually even the, um, the coordination system is in the middle. So now the model is ready to go. Uh, make sure we save it. Control S will save. And now we're going to go to the uh, finite elements modeling side. So please pause the video and make the model. And if you've done that, we can go to the finite elements modeling project. Great. So if you've made the model, we are ready to go. So if you remember from the previous tutorials, we need to go to the file and go to the pre post in here or an easier way you can go to the application in the simulation area I can go to the pre post so usually what we supposed to do we go to the new Feynman simulation but there's another feature here called a split body what we're going to do in order to save time because the length of the bar we have is 1500 mils and it will impact, not technically this mode, but in reality, once you have a more complicated parts, um, you will have a longer mesh to do that. So in order to save time, we would be able to split it in the middle because this one is completely symmetrical. And if I tell the software, I'm gonna just study one side of it, just one side of it, uh, it would technically like, would be the same as studying the full bar because everything is symmetrical. So that's why I'm gonna use a split body, click on that, Click on the model you have and also choose the plane that we're gonna cut it. So it's the plane that we have in the middle. So we choose that plane in the middle, which is the XY plane, and we'll click OK. So what you have is two bodies, one body and the other one. And as I said, the reason for it, we are saving some time. We will have a faster mesh because everything's symmetrical. So I go to the new Feynman simulation. I'll make a new finite elements modeling and simulation. Like before, the name of the files. And in here, so usually what is to use by default is all visible. But click on that and choose select because I'm gonna choose only one body. Otherwise, we will have two bodies imported to do the FEA. I don't change anything, geometry options, solve it and next run, I don't change anything. Analysis the structure, I don't change anything, and also non 2D solid option. So everything is default. The only thing what I've changed is body to use. Click on that and choose the body I'm gonna study, and I will click OK. Now we are in the solution page, the name of the solution, which you can rename it whatever you want. The solver is an extension. And as the type is structural and solution type is in linear statics, global constraint, everything's default, I don't change anything. I will click OK. Great, so I'm in the environment for uh, the FAM. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna make the uh, mesh, and this time it's a 3D tetrahedral mesh we're going to use because we have a 3d model so usually we used to do a 1d mesh but now it's a 3d one we're going to use a 3d tetrahedral mesh we'll choose the body the full body we have two c tetra four and ten the only difference of those is number of the nodes c tetra four so every element has four nodes c tetra ten every element had ten nodes so i'm going to go with ten nodes because i want to have more number of nodes now we're going to put the element size, so let's put it 25 in here. Mesh settings, so to have the local mesh, so internal mesh gradation, 
usually by default is 1%. Bring it in the middle, 50%. So we have a 50% increase on the surface curvatures and also 50% increase on the internal areas. And a click OK. Great. So we've done the mesh. Now we need to choose the material. So go to the mesh. You see it actually is a mesh. It's created. That's why you have a plus button. Click on the plus. Go to the 3D collectors, solid one, and you see that actually your mesh is in here. If I drag it, you see that actually these are the number of the elements you have. So go to the solid, right click on it, and click on edit. Edit again. And now you would be able to choose the material to give the characteristic to the model to so software find out what material you're having and how it should perform and let's choose steel and also it's isotropic and click OK OK again and OK great so I've done the, my mesh I've done the uh, material as well so now it's ready to go to define the constraint and forces so if you remember in the simulation file view Usually see that, click on that and go. So if you're in the mesh level, bring it to the FTA level. And now you will be able to see these options. So one side is fixed, always is supported. So use the user defined constraint and I click one of the faces. So if in case you're coming back from the tutor number two, make sure over there we've choose the filter as a nod make sure you bring it back to the no selection filter because this one is 3d now i can choose a face so choose that side and now on the fixture the graph freedom so i'm gonna fix it for translation across x axis across y axis but free translation on the z axis free rotation across X axis, fix, and fix. So just a translation across that axis and just a rotation across X axis and click OK. So now we fixed one side of the part. Um, so if you remember, this is just a half of the uh, bar, it's not the full bar. So technically, the fixture I've done here, I would have it somewhere else there as well. But because I don't have the model and I'm gonna tell the software, how it works because otherwise we won't be able to study properly and as I said we're gonna make it three point band test and we are trying to make it as a real world condition but because we want to save time we just studied half of the part so there is a function here if I go to the constraint type and if I click on the symmetric constraint I can tell the software in the middle side this is the area the plane that actually we cut at the bar it can choose that face and I will click OK so what this one what this feature does whatever constraint you put here it will assume a symmetrical and copy it across the rest of the bar which we don't see it there so it would be there so technically I've told the software whatever constraint I've put here just with the distance 750 put it on the other side of the bar which you don't see it at the moment so I've done the two constraint. Now I'm ready to put a force in the middle. So we'll go and click on the force. It's a normal force. Again, the plane in the middle because the force is inserted in the middle. So we'll click on that face. Yes, that polygon face over there. And the amount was 2000 Newton. Now click the direction of it. So we'll click X axis. And it's the opposite, so I will reverse direction and I will click OK. So, what you will be able to see support force in the middle, and also support in another side, which I don't see it because I told the server that I'm gonna study just one side of the part. So, everything is ready to do uh, an FE analysis on it, so I will click on solve. And OK. Yeah. 
yes it's done so we click this one to close the tabs you see that actually the analysis job has been finished so we'll cancel this one and we cancel the other one as well so if i come back to the simulation navigator you'll see that your result is created so we'll double click on our structure you see it actually my solution has the result in here so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna see the stress elemental nodal so it's the average between element and nodes that go to the bone misses what we were able to see that actually the force that you inserted in here in the middle it done some kind of you know deformation and i have 12.81 megapascal force in the middle so if i click on play you would be able to see that actually how it's deformed something interesting if you see the sub realize that it's a full bar that we have we just study one side of it because of that symmetric constraint that i put it assumes that actually bar has the rest of the lens as well over there so that's this one let me stop the animation and i go to the displacement and the magnitude of x y z and for quick you see that actually the highest displacement you have in the middle is a 0.163 millimeter displacement which i can animate it as well again see how actually it deform so that was it for today we finished this tutorial as well um, so hopefully it was useful and you learned something new again take care of yourself and stay safe at home please keep in touch with me through email and on the canvas using the form that i'm going to create if in case you have a question and i'm more than happy um, to answer your question thank you so much take care bye bye